I V M. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IVM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IVM swag. So do fill out those surveys. The language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, tread carefully. But listen, yaar, don't be so conservative. Namaste. Welcome to Man Ki Baat, which it is not. It's more like just Baat Cheet. And what we're going to do today is meet a very interesting man, an entrepreneur, a marketing uh, genius, as well as an author who's gone through different genres because that itself is a, is a huge thing. But before we meet him, here's my tip. Not, did I say tit? I meant tip. I, I do. You must understand. These things happen with age. Unfortunately, the wrong words come out of the mouth. But I mean tip. Tip for the day. As it opens up the city, I'm talking about Mumbai here. So if you're outside Mumbai, please bear with us. One of the things I think you have to keep with you now is a small toothbrush. You get them, you used to get them on airlines. Just keep that with you. I find that's very good, a very effective tool to have with you. So that if you spend the whole day out, which you're doing after a long period of time, whenever you take your meals or you about meet new people, you've got a little toothbrush, you could nip into a bathroom or any private area and quickly do a little toothbrushing. Put it back inside its thing and put it back inside the uh, where, wherever you want to keep it. So that toothbrush is my tip for the day, TIP. And please don't scoff. This will really come in handy if you're going from one meeting to the other, meeting different clients, people throughout the course of a long day, which you haven't had for almost two years, courtesy Corona and politicians of Asia and Africa and South America and perhaps also Western Europe. Whether you're an established sports person or a budding one or simply a sports enthusiast, join us, Tanvi and Shlok. We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy, mindset and everything sport. So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday. Only on the IVM Podcast Network. Trust us, it's going to be lit. Now, let's meet one of our legendary friends. In a second, he will appear. I'll press some buttons and that's what technology is all about. There he is, Rishi Tiparaya who uh, actually we go back a little bit because we both come from the same ugly school where everybody had to study cramped in small places with no air conditioning. It was an elite school, but it was quite crappy when you think about the fact that the infrastructure didn't really go anywhere compared to today's IB schools and all those yeah. kids live like they're in business class, man. I don't, no wonder they miss it. I was just thinking, big staircases, you walk up and down, it takes about 15 minutes, your legs are paining, your knees are gone and you're just a kid. And um, yeah, and the, and the fans in all these old buildings were always too far for me, Rishi. I, I felt they were just a waste of time. They totally were. I mean, I think it was 20-foot ceilings. You just don't find places like that now. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, the IB schools, yeah, the IB schools, I mean, they look like five-star, seven-star hotels now. It's, uh, really? Really? They have lifts and people with gloves serving you food sometimes. You know, they've got like menus that come online and stuff. I mean, in the old days, are poor things. Yeah. Uh, we had a uh, we had a trial class last week for two hours, and the, my daughter was quite happy to come back after meeting her friends because they yeah. just got so used to the comforts of home. But this is not about us. This is about the one and only Rishi. Uh, Rishi Piparaya, let's go right into the beginning of the whole thing. Firstly, you had a fairly South Mumbai sort of beginning, you know, I would say normal, but conventional would be the right word. You went to cathedral school, you went to uh, college in Bombay, and from there you moved on to Cornell, was it? That's right, yeah. No, so actually, so after cathedral, I took the you know direct career path. You know, cathedral is 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. Right. Chhatrapati Shivaji Airport. So I went, uh, yeah, yeah. So I went uh, straight to. There are two under- of them. Which one did you go to? <laughs> I went to the international terminal. And, uh, and because you can't just tell the taxi driver Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus because that might cause trouble. You might go yeah, to the wrong one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At that time, yeah, at okay. that time there was, I think, this, this one. Pre Google. Pre, yeah, pre Google, pre, pre internet, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, went, went straight uh, to Rochester for my undergrad, and then went on to Cornell for my MBA. Uh, so got done with right. formal education and then just got into the workforce. So got into the banking space, took my first job in Madrid yeah. with a banker called Santander. Santander in Madrid, Spain. 
Madrid pick Spain, up Spanish yes. on the flight coming in, obviously, because you're one of those guys. Who, these things are no under problem. Spanish, I, no problem, hombre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did Spanish with my uh, daughter, who's got a test going on right now in Spanish, and you know, I was going berserk because I had to, you know, say whether it's correct or not, uh, yeah. um, uh, antonyms and synonyms and the usual nonsense in another language. And the worst part is, it's very similar. Words are very similar to English, but they aren't exactly. So it's actually oh, even tougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the verbs, the verbs are really tough. You know the present and the, you know the singular the plural the conjugations i mean it is a complicated language octopus is pulpio sorry i just want to give this nugget <laughs> of information octopus is, oh so you do speak spanish i yeah. well, i picked it up while i was there yes a little bit there you go all right yeah. so i i want to just quickly talk about the beginning uh, of the great uh, the birth of the uh, piparaya legend only from the point of view <laughs> that actually what we we'll talk, want to talk about is the authorship obviously and the all the new yeah. books and the old books if we can but when you're in Rochester and when you're in Cornell, and the great thing about the US is they offer you these kind of cross-stream uh, platforms where you can go with yeah. an arts uh, uh, as one and a, and a science, uh, you know, subject as two and something else as three. So did you get into writing and creative writing or you were a hardcore, you know, I'm going to be a banker, I'm going to be maybe do my marketing as well and that's where I am. No, no, actually, you know, that's what I loved about the US education system uh, because, you know, I, well, I did engineering to keep my parents happy. I did economics to keep my... Do you know, Rishi, world. sorry to interrupt, how many times I've heard this sentence <laughs> from my early MTV days uh, touring across the country, forget just the online platform. Yeah. How many people have said this? I did engineering or my MBA <laughs> to keep my parents happy. Yeah. It's like, parents, are you listening? And then the guy goes on to do something totally different, you know? And I'm totally like, different, Why? yeah. Wow, yeah. we educate the parents? The, Oh. Yeah, I know, but the US gave me that flexibility. So I did, you know, every semester I would do one or two engineering classes. I did one economics class because I thought um, career wise, that's probably makes more sense. And then I would take, you know, one or two classes to do stuff I really enjoy. So I have, you know, I've done the most random courses. If you look at my college transcript, you know, gangster, gangster films, creative wow. writing. Did yeah. you get a course called gangster films? There was, oh, it was a lovely course. I loved it. So every every Thursday, you would just go and watch... You're breaking my heart. <laughs> and you would oh. watch one gangster film starting from the 1940s wow. all the way up to... Up I to love gangster 90s. films. Oh. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I saw a lot of that. It was a long time back, but saw everything. And all you have to do is you write, a, you come back and write an essay, essay on, yeah. on the film, on, on you know how it fits in into the culture and society of those days. Mm. Uh, so I would do, you know, one one or two random courses which I think actually have helped, helped me the most uh, post-career. So, so you must have been well-versed with all those oldies, the Al Capones, the Dutch Schultz, oh, Pretty yeah. Boy Floyd, yeah. all those, on the water, Bonnie yeah, and Clyde. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So must have seen all, all of those. those. All of those. Yeah. Uh, and, and So it gives you that flexibility, yeah. But I, would just, I want to just take this point forward, just come out of left field. If you actually do a gangster theory paper or whatever, I mean, what is one What is one supposed to do with that? Suppose that becomes your major. <laughs> can it become your major? I mean, what do you do? Probably film studies can become a major. Yeah, I don't know, with the one individual course, what you can do besides, uh, yeah, just go and watch, have fun on Thursday evenings. No, but I think it just gives you a, when you start thinking about it, you look at the culture, the society, what was happening in the prohibition era in the US and how that has evolved into the various, I guess, you know, gangster clans or whatever. So it gives you, it just gives you some perspective. And I don't know how it all fits in together in the future. Well, it fits in more than the engineering, electrical engineering courses I did for sure. <laughs> so did, did you watch Broad Street? Broadwalk, what is it? The, the Broad, one, the Martin Scorsese. Yeah, yeah, yeah the I think Broadwalk, 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 yeah. Broadwalk, yeah. yeah, Broadwalk. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. No, but I'm just thinking, did, did you ever get a call uh, after that from uh, like a Sicilian American <laughs> voice saying, I'm going to give make you an offer you can't refuse? Because your name sounds Italian. I'm, I'm sure they don't know well enough. People say, <laughs> Rishi Piparaya. Yeah, it's got an Italian slant to it. It does, hey, it does sound. Uh, it does sound more exotic. Rishi. Rishi, like Rishi will become Rishi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We have to. There's so much to talk about. So we've got. Yeah. Uh, so you're doing all this. You're still, as you said, keep the dad and mom happy. But you, but you actually got into the mainstream of corporate life. You went yeah. to Madrid first, but there are some big names also along with that. There's City. City. You were at yeah. Citibank. You were at Aviva. That's right. So after Madrid, so, yeah. So, you, so I mean, I yeah, I moved to Citibank in New York. Uh, so my background was in international strategy. I mean, just uh, you know, having lived abroad. Uh, so I was with the strategy team for a while. Uh, I moved to India around 2003 with Citibank itself uh, and um, spent five or six year, years over here with them. I was looking after insurance and wealth management and then moved to Aviva Life Insurance, which is another reasonably big sized company out here and moved over there as head of bank insurance sales, uh, then head of marketing. Uh, and around um, uh, you know five, six years back, decided to call it quits from the corporate world and move into stuff I really enjoy. 
Okay, yeah. no, no, she tell us the truth, okay? Because uh, yeah. this all sounds like a fairy tale. But you obviously must have, well, someone's trying to follow your career and thinking the same way because their heart lies in writing or films or yeah. something else. And their, you know, their corporate career is doing well. Does one make a lot of money, put it aside and have that like a shell and, and you then say, I can go forward and do the creative stuff? Or did you actually just take a punt and say, I can't do this anymore. I'll just take a chance. No, no, it was, it was well planned. I would say, I, I don't think you need a lot of money uh, to be able to, follow your passions uh, but you need to be, be able to make some you know sacrifices and compromises so one thing i told my family for example is that look when i leave the corporate world we are not going to acquire any new assets right so if we have one car we're going to have one car we will keep replacing the car when it gets old but it's not like we'll have two cars or three cars if we have one house we're not going to be getting a farmhouse we're not getting a second home uh, so warning we, people listening this doesn't apply for relatives you don't replace your mom dad wife <laughs> yeah. children when they get old you still keep them yeah, okay. They might yeah. yeah. So, Rishi, I have uh, another untruth here yeah. because you're also an angel investor. So it sounds like you made a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> no, no, no. Angel, I mean, these are very small. There's very small investments. And actually, I call myself a mentor capitalist. So more than money, I kind of give my time and resources. So I my spend brother time. Rishi, my brother Rishi. <laughs> the moment you put money on the table, was one rupee or ten thousand. You you change the game altogether. Okay, because you're putting your okay. money into somebody else's world. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's not harp on that. Let's get because I really want to get into the book that I read. I haven't read the others yet, but I'm sure which yeah. is uh, I'll be damned. It's so refreshing. And and again. And what I like is that someone is writing about my life. You see, I, I think too many people when they make films or do art and, and all that in, in India, especially, they always try to downright, downright or down make. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm using the right phrase because I don't want to sound elitist or classes, <laughs> but they never talk to their own people. You know, in a sense, they're always yeah. trying to include everybody in, and then and it all becomes like a communist sort of aspect to it. And then suddenly there's a whole different uh, picture being painted. But what I loved about I'll Be Damned is that you totally understood what we travelers were going through back <laughs> yeah. in the 90s and the early 2000s, with this, which has not really changed. We still have the same problems and it, it was kind of spot on. So now just take us through this transition. You're a successful guy. You've done everything right. And you've suddenly decided I can't do this anymore, whatever. But you already got this book in your head. How, how does all that happen? The, the yeah. switch? No, so I'll be damned. I mean, I wrote that while I was working. I was at Aviva. I was heading uh, national sales for them. And I was... You taking... millions of dollars and you're writing your own <laughs> no. book on the side. I'm like, yes, sir, I'll, I'll get back to you on that mail. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Is that the way it works? Uh, yeah. Chetan no, Bhagat told us something similar. I'm, I'm sure really? lots of writers in the corporate world were doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was doing... I was taking three or four flights a week. Uh, I am the most paranoid flyer you'll ever meet. Uh, you know, I just... I mean, uh, my heart so is... So three hours early? Oh, yeah, yeah. Three hours early, clutching the, you know, armrests when the plane takes off. Uh, any slightest turbulence and my, I'm, you know, I'm almost in tears. Uh, so I would take all these flights, but I had to do it for work. And I had all these, you know, interesting stories that have, would happen to me. Uh, you know, so for example, I'm on a flight. I have the CEO of Hindustan Lever or Unilever sitting next to me. I'm all set to make these great, you know, conversations. And then the flight takes off. There's turbulence. And I clutch his hand. And I'm like almost, oh, save me. <laughs> and this is the CEO of, you know, Unilever. Uh, so all these things used to happen to me in every flight, there was something and I would tell my friends these stories and they would laugh, you know, and I'm being very serious that, oh gosh, you know, this is what's happening. So eventually I just put all these stories on paper. I put it in a book form and I just, uh, you know, uh, had it published uh, through, through Jayco, another, you know, cathedralite. And it just turned out to be a national bestseller because like you said, everyone just identified with those experiences. Uh, you know, what do you go through when you're on a flight? What do you go through, you know, when you land, baggage claim? Um, so well, that was written yeah, while, I was at, while I was at work. I had a national bestseller, you know, out of, out of nothing. And that gave me the confidence that, hey, you know, I mean, writing is something. I mean, I enjoyed it anyways. I've been writing satire and humor for a, for a while. So I thought, hey, let me continue on this journey. Um, so two, two so that, questions quickly come to mind. One is, what did the Unilever CEO, uh, what was his reaction? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's, with all his double MBAs, he wasn't prepared for this kind of uh, situation in his entire life. And yeah. the second thing is that, uh, so is it fair to say that because you were on the plane, or rather you were in and out of planes nonstop throughout that period, uh, you know, you were just jotting down notes all the time because you know, this happened, yeah. that happened, watching the yeah. behavior, the body language, the collective yes. body language, some kind of ridiculous behavior that happens. Yeah. So, so that's so that's clear. What happened with the with the CEO? With the with the CEO, yeah, he, he was a very he was a very very uh, sophisticated person. Uh, so he just said, "Oh, bumpy flight, isn't it?" In his you know clipped British accent. He didn't, he didn't pull his hand away. No, no, he didn't actually. And then you know when yeah. when the book got published a few years later, and he got a copy, and he remembered the incident, so he actually reached out to me, 
and he said man i remember that incident so vividly and i went back he went back home to his wife and he said that you know i was in this flight with this you know gentleman and i just pity you know the, the amount of flights he has to take and stuff like that so, uh, so it was and, interesting and the co traveler the co the lottery of the co traveler was sitting next to him in each and every flight <laughs> but, but yeah. you know what you could have really done which would have been i think would have been sensational is once the turbulence stopped and it was a peaceful flight for say about 20 minutes you then grabbed his hand again this time with the more open <laughs> gesture you know hey, now in peace <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe for the next edition yeah <laughs> So you know you weren't prepared for the sort of success and the feedback you were going to get because everybody, uh, you know, the two things I, I think when you're writing, one is the empathy and identification, which only some people can get right, no matter what you say. And there's of course the prose and style and the writing uh, effort. Yeah. But I think that firstly, that 50% of the battle is getting that right. And for me again, I think the fact that you decided to write on something which is very, very clearly your life, which then becomes our life, people of yeah. the same, you know, uh, sort of subset, let's say, let's not get into all the economics involved. Then we realize at last someone's singing my song, man. Because I come and scream at my wife about what I went through in the airport or tell my mother, <laughs> I can't bear these guys who rush to the uh, thing the moment they announce, you know. The same yeah. Indians who behave really well in Denmark. Uh, but then yeah. when they come back to the Bombay <laughs> flight, they're just pushing and they just said uh, business class and old people and pregnant yeah. women, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and the youngest, strongest guy, you know, 21 years old, filled with life, <laughs> goes in front. So, yeah, so I, I, I think that was a spot on book. I must congratulate you. I know we've discussed it before, but it needs to be discussed. That goes into Job Be Damned. Now you've yeah. tasted success, obviously. So now there's a little pressure. The second one is always going to be a little because now people expect something from you. And also, yeah. what are you going to talk about? Yeah. You know, you, you've hit something, you've hit home. People like me would be lovely. What is Job Be Damned? So job, be damned is a, yeah, job Be Damned is a satire on corporate life. So again, you know, 15 years of experience working with large multinationals. Uh, and again, there's just so much humor and so much uh, satire, so much fun that you can make of about, you know, simple things like, you know, attending meetings and, you know, managing perceptions and, uh, you know, how you should walk around the office looking busy, how you should do your appraisals. So I've taken, again... I was just thinking, you mentioned the email, the emailing from one desk to the next desk. In the, in the late 90s, uh, I remember that email became uh, the greatest thing in the world. And everybody was yeah. like, drop me a mail, drop me a mail. They just wanted to say the line. It was literally like, we're all meeting for dinner at six. <laughs> no, man, just, the two guys are sitting yeah. next to each other. Drop me a mail, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got an entire chapter on emails over there. There's a flow chart on whether you should CCC or BCC or FYI, you know, an email because there's so much, so much thought that can actually go into it, right? Do you want to BCC your boss and get your you know coworker into trouble? Do you want to forward it FYI and get him in, into even more trouble? So, uh, so I've taken every aspect of corporate life and made fun of it over there, and uh, I I love the book. Yeah. Did uh, you mention Did you mention the one thing that really? Uh, I mean, I go to CNBC every week, so I, mean, I still go to the same thing. They make you sign a register. Okay, the watchman oh, who is <laughs> not English speaking. And I write, I've always written names like Batman, Superman, or Mr. Mother, Cho, you know, those kind of <laughs> really stupid. But in English, in chaste English and spelling it funnily yeah. and all for myself. Not once have I been stopped. Not once have they said, what okay. the hell is this? Not once have they asked for the Aadhaar card to corroborate or anything. Okay. And if they ask for the phone number, I give my friend Kunal Vizikar's number. It's all across the corporate world. So I, I have <laughs> futility. I have wondered about those registers. Yeah, I've, I've, I have wondered. I mean, what could be the... I mean, there's no possible use, I think. It's to entertain the watchman, Rishi. I think because he's bored. So he's requested yeah. then the, the guy or the guy who's sitting at the desk, you know, he's not got much of a job. I don't know. And, you know, from there, it's fine. I know, I know. But, yeah. no, sorry, I'm just saying this, this is your genius, which, which, which I just want to point out. The fact <laughs> that you're getting the topics right. So then you've yeah. got a market. You know, of a lot, and it's a lot bigger market than people think. You know, uh, yeah. of, of people who understand that you understand what they're going through, and that okay, is a science or art which is a little above the everyday man. You know, no, only no, a few people you. can figure yeah. that out. I think, I think that's the brilliant part. Uh, having praised you enough, now we can start abusing. <laughs> uh, sorry, I interrupted you. You were saying. You know, I was saying, yeah, just, you know, the, I think uh, in India, we go out of our way to keep people occupied. I mean, so every time I go to the mall, right, I mean, and you take those tickets out of those parking counters. Oh. So it's right there, but there'll, there'll be one person to pass the ticket from that machine to you, right? And that's, really? Uh, why? And I wonder, why? I wonder, I can, right I can lean over and take it, because it's right there. Yeah. So, I know we need to give labor work, but I mean, this is yeah. how can he go home and justify his work to his wife? Aaj <laughs> aisa karke, waisa kiya, bar. Huh? Ek bar salute bhi kya beech mein. Oh God. Sorry. Sorry to make fun of people. Job is a job. And during lockdown, yeah. you'll appreciate the job. Even if yeah. it's just handing out the ticket. Okay. So now let's get back to the, the what we're going to talk about. Hopefully we do have enough time because that's the meat and potatoes of this. Cities of adventure. So the whole deal here now, obviously you had kids. Yeah. And yeah. 
and so you tasted blood there because entertaining <laughs> kids is not easy and taking kids on holidays oh god sometimes you plan so much and you work so hard and then yeah. you know you go there and you're confronted with uh, angry kid sulky kid sleepy kid tired kid bored kid yeah. so how to get uh, you tell let me jump the gun you tell us so what was the motivation so, so the motivation was exactly you know what you uh, you know what you said you know you take the you take your kids to all these you know nice holidays and you take them to all these you know cities with lovely architecture and you take them to london or paris and there's eiffel tower Which is anything outside mumbai <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so you take them all over the you know uh, all over the world but you know all they want to do is they want to go to the parks or they want to go to the beaches and they're really not interested in the museums and architecture and all that and i figured that look as adults when we travel you know we have lonely planet we have trip advisor there's a lot of stuff that gets us interested into the city uh, but there was nothing for kids uh, so the challenge was that look can i do something which will keep kids entertained and engaged or interested uh, once they reach a new international city and that's how cities of adventure you know came about so i visualized them as travel guides uh, something like a lonely planet or uh, you know uh, any travel guide but rather than just giving information uh that yeah you know the eiffel tower is so tall or you know the louvre has these paintings uh can i actually write it in the form of a fictional story so i will have an adventure in each city uh and i will have the kids go you know from one attraction to the other through a set of characters uh and they that will be a lot more interesting and engaging for them uh so i tried this out with a with a you know with with some friends you know a friend was going to istanbul uh with his family and i said hey okay let me write you a story based in istanbul uh and i quickly wrote uh, you know uh, just a very rough adventure uh had it illustrated and gave it gave it to them printed it at the local copy shop and gave it to them and these guys had a fantastic trip in istanbul because now suddenly the kids know all about you know the the blue mosques and the museums and and they are one upping their parents that hey did you know this is happening here or this happened here this is the history of this place and they came back raving saying hey we've had a fantastic trip and so that gave me uh, that gave me the insight or the idea that look let me now see if i can scale this up and do this for cities all around the all around the world um so so i got started on that i you know got local experts and destination experts and writers to you know start putting things together and then in 2019 luckily a year before the lockdown uh, my wife and i we took five months off Wow! I made a seventy-five thousand kilometer journey around the world. Uh, so we started out here in Mumbai, went all over Asia, Australia, uh, the US, covered fifty-five global cities. It's almost like you knew what was going to come. You banked five months of the, holiday. Look at yeah, the timing. Yeah. The timing was perfect in hindsight. You are a yeah. genius. He is a genius. <laughs> Write it down. Tell, tell, tell me yeah. what stocks I should uh, let go of and what I should buy. Uh, <laughs> <the show>. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll talk Bitcoin yeah. uh, a few hours later as well. Uh, so five months gone. Sorry. Yeah. Five so months five, three continents. Five months across across yeah across three continents, fifty five global cities. Wow. And I have personally visited now every every attraction that I'm kind of covering in these in these books. I just um, want to know if you went to Kabul. Uh, no, I you won't not. be going there for a long time. I don't think so. You bank that one in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah not not the, funny. Not nice. Missed the entire Middle East. Fifty-five. Can you just name some of the cities? Oh, I mean, like all the usual suspects, I'm sure. All the yeah, all the usual. I mean, uh, let's see. I mean, we, we started in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing. You know, Tokyo, uh, Kyoto. Wow. Went down to Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, uh, French Polynesia, which was which was lovely, uh, and then got our, well, uh, New Zealand. Um, So and French Polynesia and all you you stay. I'm, I I don't want to sound uh, mean <laughs> again, but you can stay in the, you stay in proper hotels and all that. Or it's a yeah, little yeah, yeah. Uh, more rural. No, no. French Polynesia is actually very, very uh, uh, isolated and and expensive. So there, it's. Uh, I mean, they really they just have fa- these fancy hotels. So it was a short. It was a short. Were there stay. any Indians in French Polynesia? Uh, no, were they, didn't. Were they Indians? No, didn't see. No, didn't meet anyone actually. I got to write this down. There's a place with no Indians. <laughs> I got to find French Polynesia. Yeah, okay, done. You convinced me. Okay, super. Oh, yeah, then? and then went, then went on, to, uh, and then went on to the US. So uh, US and a little bit of uh, South America. Canada. South America. Uh, so did this. Uh, did this cruise through the Panama Canal and covered parts of Mexico and Colombia and all. and uh, and spent a good two months in the us covering again all the major cities a uh, lot of them have books already based in them so los angeles washington boston new york um so did you do this uh, planning ahead or, or this sounds like you've done it verbatim like on the spot a lot of it no just... i would say no 90% of it was planned uh 10% we kind of left it open that we'll you know we'll see where we want to go or where we want to spend more time or where we want to you know scoot early uh I think it was yeah fairly well planned. Some things got changed. We were planning to go to Cuba, and then suddenly a coup happened in Venezuela, and then someone told us the Venezuelan 
president will rush to Cuba. So don't go there. So last minute, I think the night before we cancelled our you know, trip to Cuba. But otherwise, uh, otherwise yeah, it was uh, it was fun. We took it as it came in a way. So this works. This works as your pre-prep, or this is just uh, giving you more stories and stuff to write down because you uh, covered quite a few uh, places. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's, it's a combination of both. So some of some of the places I went, I was able to define the stories uh, because now if I'm actually going to a museum, so you know, you take Melbourne for example, and I've covered, I, you know, I'm going to every, I'm going to the museum in Melbourne. I'm actually looking out for attractions or exhibits which kids would like, or I'm finding a little nook or a little painting where there might be a little clue, and I'm kind of incorporating that into the book. So when someone actually, when a kid goes to Melbourne. Rather than going to the museum, kicking and screaming, he will actually, hopefully, want to go there and look for that little clue or look for that little uh, artifact, uh, which formed a part of the adventure that he's already read about. Uh, so, so a lot of these places have actually been going and finding stuff which might be of interest to kids and trying to weave them into a fictional story. Um, and some of them have, yeah, some of them have just collected a lot of information, and hopefully, I'll get to writing those books as well at some point. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder why they don't do this in the dry subjects in uh, teaching as well. Just use a storytelling path, you know, make it fun, dramatic, yeah. theatrical. Sometimes, you know, Archimedes slips and falls in the bathtub. He's got no clothes <laughs> on. Then you know, the recall would be better. I, I know it sounds Much flippant and all, but I'm just thinking because it's too yeah. dry for you to concentrate 45 minutes, half an hour at a time. You know, next one, next one, next one. This is a much yeah. better approach. Maybe Parliament should also do this when they're trying to make a point. Even if it's a farmer's bill, it should start with a silly story about two guys and a yeah. gorilla or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But can you tell us one story from, uh, I just want to understand the style that uh, for the child, can you one anecdote or whatever that would appeal from any of the cities that you went to that would hook a kid into, oh, okay, what's this all about? So like I said, the, the, the Melbourne story, for example, right, it's, uh, there is an actual, ex uh, well, Melbourne had, uh, you know, had a very famous racehorse called Farlap. Uh, and his stuffed hide is there in the Melbourne Museum. Uh, his saddle is there in the Melbourne Museum. Uh, and uh, and there's this whole story about him, how he was, you know, he was just an uh, ordinary horse, but turned out to be one of the, one of the most famous race horses in history. So what I've done is, uh, you know, I, and I didn't know about him until I went to Melbourne and I actually saw him in the museum. So I've, the story is about his saddle getting stolen uh, and the thief leaves clues all around Melbourne. Uh, and so the kids have, you know, and the, the, the father is a scientist. So he's, they've gone to Melbourne to analyze the saddle. The saddle is suddenly stolen and the kids take it upon themselves to find it. And so they follow the clues and they go from one place to the other uh, following the clues. So the place takes them to Flinders Street Station. It takes them to Fitzroy, you know, gardens. It takes them to Captain Cook's Cottage. Now, these are all attractions in Melbourne, which normally kids would not enjoy. Uh, but now because they've been following these clues, they will actually, you know, they will actually go to these attractions and look out for little things. So in Flinders Street Station, you know, there's a bunch of clocks and you know, there's one special clock, which I have, you know, gotten to the story. So when they go to the station, they will actually look out for the clock. Uh, so it's a fun story. In the end, they find they find the saddle. Everyone's happy. So, so using kidnapping of a legendary story, you've made it interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I see this. I see this in our press today also. When you take a Raj Kundra story, it's far more interesting than Pegasus. You can bury <laughs> Pegasus in the background. And the Raj Kundra story is, lights up your life because you're all more interested in porn and mud island and shady, you know, women and men yeah. making silly pictures and trying to <laughs> you down get them downloaded yeah. on some site that doesn't exist or whatever. So yeah, I think I think that's it's all about distracting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, do you get any feedback? Because uh, I think one thing, <laughs> parents of young kids, they always need help. So there's uh, friends and family, and then beyond that, any feedback on the on these books? Yeah, yeah. So I've just, I mean, they've just uh, released a month or two back, um, and no, I mean, kids are kids are we loving have this it. Travel issue, yeah. Yeah, and the timing is unfortunately a bit bad because uh, people are not traveling as much, at least uh, out here in India. Uh, in the US, people have just started, you know, traveling. So I'm getting a little bit of feedback early feedback from there. Mm -hmm. But I think people are loving it. And the nice thing is, uh, you know, people are liking the characters and the stories. And at least it's driving, a, you know, an inclination to travel. So now people are more interested in Melbourne. So when they go there, they do think they'll have a better holiday. People are interested in Los Angeles. So I think it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's good early feedback. But I'm really waiting for travel to start because that's when people will really see the, the power of, of these books and, uh, and storytelling. It's, it's a, I just want to quickly mention there's a trilogy. Let's put them in order. The first is the secrets of uh, Snallygaster. Yeah. 
That's right? Washington DC. That's Washington well, DC. Yes. Uh, Sally Castle is a real. When I first saw it, I was like, "What the hell is that?" But it's a real uh, this, uh, name, right? It's a mythical. Yeah, it's a mythical creature, and uh, which was apparently there in uh, DC about a hundred years ago, or people used to speak about it, uh, and uh, so I've created a whole adventure around that. Uh, Far, uh, Farlap Saddle, of course, you just mentioned Melbourne. Melbourne. So, so that's there. I worry for the other famous Melbourne people, like say Shane Warne, because they may stuff him <laughs> and you know put his hide up, and then you'll write another story about that that's because right. you know cricket is our thing here. <laughs> Framed in Hollywood, uh, Los Angeles, I suppose. Los Angeles. Yes, that's so, right. City of Los Angeles. Okay, and of course, hundreds of stories. Did yeah, you put a gangster story in? If I was a young boy, and you know, uh, I mean, that would really appeal. Oh, that, that's a nice idea. I should, yeah. <laughs> That's you don't want idea. any blood in all that. Maybe, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. Chicago or or yeah. some Italian maybe city Ch- or something. Yeah. What were the father and the son only want to go to Chicago? <laughs> Let's <laughs> check this city out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What do you write about Bangkok? Thailand's gonna be a tough one. Uh, we have uh, lady boy, we have boy, we have girl, we have more lady boy. <laughs> Perhaps not for children. Come back when you're more than lady boy. Um, okay, Rishi, we're gonna we're gonna get um, young. This man loves traveling, Silvery. Unfortunately, like like you just said, you've written these beautiful books, and they really make a lot of sense for people to have with them. And I hope people take to them the moment the world opens up. But unfortunately, yeah. then we had this coma for about eighteen months to two years, so uh, yeah. which has affected travel. But let's see. So the, obviously, this is a work in progress. You'll write more, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So I've because got. I mean, I've got. Many. Yeah, I've got at least twelve planned. Um, so well, I'm releasing New York, New York soon. Then Copenhagen. Oh, what about Indian cities? Just for the you know, you'll, because I'm just thinking we're going to start I, by going to Indian cities, I know, and then I, we'll make the the jump because of the yeah. restrictions, etc. I do. So would you? I mean, I do want to cover. I do want to Mumbai, cover Delhi, Bangalore guy. Yeah, I do want to cover Mumbai and Delhi for sure to start with. I think a lot of fun adventures could be created could be created here. But again, you kind of take things for granted. I'm living in Mumbai, you know, for so long. You just you know you say, oh, let me do these other cities. I'll do Mumbai later. So it's just you. you take... And also, how much? How can you lie? What is the lure to come to Mumbai? You, <laughs> I can't find any. <laughs> I wish I could. I mean, it's pure fiction. These are what you've done is like a part fiction thing because you're taking legendary stories which are real, and then you're, yeah. you're uh, innovating. A, a, a pathway from there, but in Mumbai, it's going to be really hard. From zero, you'll have to start. Or, or yeah. what, will, what will be the site? Come and see our traffic. You know, now that it's resumed, <laughs> the great. Or our metro, the unfinished work. You know, it's like uh, Egyptians yeah. made those pyramids in three days. And we're stuck with these stupid metros <laughs> for years. Yeah. All right. Hey, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On a show about crypto, Rohan Joshi talks to blockchain lawyer Varun Sethi, who busts myths about the illegality of crypto in India. On our new show, The Longest Constitution, hosted by Priya Mirza, we look at what it actually has to say about things we come across in our daily lives. In our first episode, we touch upon adultery laws and why they treat men and women differently. Bollywood's ace producer Madhu Mantana opens up to Sid about Indian cinema's biggest project Ramayan on Candid Kanan. On Agla Station Adulthood, Cesar Sangai talked about the state of organic farming in India. And on Getting Meta, a chat with Pallavi from HRX on fitness and battling depression. Do follow us on social media, we're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any other show for that matter, please do tell a friend. That's really helpful for us. And finally, we'd like to thank the sponsors on the network this week, Seat Cred, Bank of Baroda, Intuit India, and Coinswitch Kubert. We really do appreciate the support. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. Silvery, please come in. Young man. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Banker, marketing, international strategist, so he could travel at that point as well. All leading to writing books, which also involve a lot of traveling. And now, looking at the next generation as his market. Quite a lot of work being done there. We yeah, need to have him as a strategist <laughs> thing for our show. <laughs> uh, so okay. I want I want to ask, how, what made you choose travel as opposed to another genre? Say uh, it could have been it is travel for children, like travel books for children. What about like uh, had you considered maybe like history books for children or sci-fi books for children also, something like that? Yeah, no travel. I mean, this was actually uh, I just found this a uh, clear gap. In the in the market, like I was I was telling Cyrus, is absolutely there was nothing for for children to keep them entertained, and it started out. You know, I mean, the the idea got sparked. I, I went to this. You know, I was supposed to meet this friend. You know, friend for a beer, and uh, Cyrus, you know, uh, you know, Nikhil, I think. Uh, so I was going to meet him, uh, uh, Raghavan, Nikhil. 
Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was meant to meet this is I was Harsha's, meant to, Harsha's, Harsha's brother. brother. Harsha's Correct. brother, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was meant to meet him for a beer and last minute he bailed out and he said that, um, hey, I can't, I'm doing something really important. So I said, uh, uh, what are you doing? He said, just come over, we'll have a beer here. And I went over and he was busy printing out um, information on, on Paris and making these manila folders, uh, you know, for, uh, and I said, what are you doing? He said, oh no, we're going to Paris for the holiday and I'm making these folders for the kids, you know, to get them interested. And, and that's when the idea came that, look, I mean, these folders are not going to interest, interest them. Uh, so I found a clear gap that, uh, look, I need to write these uh, travel books, which will interest kids. Uh, history, I'm, I'm actually weaving a lot of history in the books. So if you look at the books at the back, at the, uh, at the end section, there's a section called a reference section, where I talk about the history of the, of the city. I talk about you know, the food. I talk about famous people. Um, so I do cover a lot of interesting information as well in each book. Uh, but the core is still a story. And travel again, it comes in head and because I love travel, uh, it's uh, it's just so much easier for me to work on these books. So. Yeah, I, I think most importantly, like I said in the beginning, he's just got the idea spot on, which is the most important thing. Because you have a separate market. Uh, Sylvie, so till you have, or if you have nephews and all, you'll understand. When you have a collective holiday and the younger people are involved, let's call them midgets who irritate. Uh, <laughs> no disrespect to those kind of people. It's a lovely thing to be not so tall. They can really ruin the holiday in a sense, you know, because you can't do anything if they don't yeah. want to eat or they don't want to eat that or they don't want to go again or they don't want to travel here and there. And the, some of the things like museums and all, okay, animals may interest them, but there's a lot of stuff which won't, you know. And my wife, for example, and many other parents around the world like to walk. They spent all that money and time. So they want to walk. Yeah. And Indians especially, they want to, every inch of that place must be covered. You know, we are, we're not that, maybe some other cultures would just come and look at two things and leave. Yeah. So I, I think it's very important that the kids get, uh, you know, hooked somehow or the other it will really help the holiday trust me we've had some problems in the old days now my kids are too old to want to be with the parents and other story <laughs> so Rishi I think that that's the, that's the main thing getting that right and then of course yeah. the fact that you're a good storyteller and then you know, he works hard which is a horrible thing it's a really bad thing <laughs> The research you do and the 55 cities. I mean, I would have just made up stuff. I mean, look at look at Harry Potter. I mean, she didn't do any research. She just she sat there in Scotland somewhere and wrote. Yeah. Okay, right. train zone. Thought of it on a train zone. Yeah, she couldn't afford a train. Yeah. She was on a train zone. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And the only thing she said was, I don't like transgenders. That's the only thing she said to anybody who passed her by. <laughs> by the way, that, that's still an outstanding warrant eh, for her arrest. For, oh, not for denying the existence of a third gender. Oh. It's a big issue. Yeah. I don't know why we it's a big issue, with this. But, it is. He's but a diehard no fan. Warrant. But there's no arrest for it. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of equity has gone, gone down, you can say, in the liberal arts world uh, for someone like that. But anyway, this is not the J.K. Rowling story. This is the Rishi Piparaya story. And he's trying to bring cultures together to see other cultures, which is better than what the Taliban will be doing this week, I can tell you. <laughs> um, okay, so shall we go to the AMAs? Yes, let's get to some AMAs. Uh, this first one comes in from Sridhar Bhupati. He says, Hi, Saris and team. Hello, Rishi, sir. Would like to know your favorite books when you were a child. Mine was Reader's Digest and Tinkle, he says. Oh, like that. Reader's, uh, Rishi, you want to, you know, you, I think I'm a little younger than me, but go ahead. <laughs> mine, mine was those, uh, the Enid Blyton uh, kind of series, all the Famous Fives oh, and Fierce, the Secret Seven. Seven. Famous yes. Five, Seven, the Famous Five Outers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I've read, read all of those and uh, just... Uh, uh, they take you. They take you to England and simple language and uh, nice. Never Never Land. What is that? Uh, I was into Goosebumps a lot. Were you guys ever into Goosebumps? Go- uh, so you're much younger. <laughs> okay, yeah. <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, were, I, into- I, I, I think I think his will. Uh, we will cover the same book types. We are the Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew. Nancy the leftovers yeah. from the generation above me. Uh, <laughs> the what is this? Uh, something investigators. There were lots of lots of oh, that yeah, genre yeah, yeah. that was you know that was out. Do you remember? And, yeah, yeah, some um, yeah. Oh, the comics, there was always Marvel and DC, obviously, because we had Shimaru nearby and we'd, uh, you know, everybody yeah. wanted those comics. Amar Chitra Kadha was quite a big hit. I, yeah, I read was. a lot of Indian history just from there, you know, whether it's things from like Rana Pratap or you just name it, it was all there. Yeah. And very well uh, written, in a, in a sense, like exactly what Rishi's done, in a, you know, just getting you interested, hooked into it. Uh, and uh, uh, do you like Mandrake? Mandrake was there, I Phantom loved. was there. Phantom, Leaf Phantom, the, go- the, go- Bahadur, the ghost, the ghost who walks. Bahadur, <laughs> Bahadur. <Bella. laughs> yeah. Which was, but you could tell that the artist uh, was like, or the artist canvas was a little uh, third world, you know, yeah. <laughs> compared to you watching, you're looking at Mandrake's pictures, and then you know, in the same thing, you're looking at uh, Bahadur. But it was great yeah. for the time. I did like that. I did like. You probably would love Mad Mad Magazine as well. I'm sure. I love Mad Magazine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Spy versus Spy, and all. Ooh, fantastic. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that too. That so so fun. then Lucky Luke. 
Did you read Lucky Luke, the Westerns? Lucky Luke. No, no. no Asterix, Tintin, and Lucky Luke. Asterix, the three big ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Big ones. Lucky Luke is, is the the headline was faster than my own shadow. It was a gun uh, no, gunslinger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then the picture the back shows shows him beating his own shadow. You know, at the, the draw. <laughs> <laughs> that was great fun, yeah. So that was our growing up. Sil- Silvery, you're scaring me. Yours was a horror. <laughs> so a quick thing. Talking about the Mad Magazine, I remember Howard Stern had once said that one of the highlights of his career was having his face as uh, being basically on the front page of uh, the Mad Magazine. The- yeah, yeah, he's like yeah. Wow. B- bigger than being on Time uh, Time Magazine and all. Oh, this course. is like bigger for him. Mad, yeah, mad my God, time for Time Magazine, you have to heal countries or something. I mean, that's not important. <laughs> this, this is much better. I, me too. I would love, I love to be in Mad Magazine. Really, uh, what yeah, happened to Mad yeah. Magazine? It just it's still shut. Around, but I think uh, slightly smaller. I think no. Bit. I think they, I think they just shut down a, a year or two back. I, I think I read something. I don't know. We'll have to. We'll have to I think it was all the mad people are in Asia now, so you know, they're having a little trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Mad Magazine has come immediately in the comment section. Well, yeah. Yeah. But it's it's okay. gone, it's gone, bro. It's, it's gone, gone really a year gone. or two. Recently. Okay. I mean, yeah. you, you couldn't save Afghanistan. You think you could save uh, oh, Mad Magazine? It's not going to happen. Yeah. Let it go now. Cry offline. Let's let's move on. Next one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one comes in from Harvest Harvest Kasar. He says, Hello all. Question to Sir. Uh, while traveling across 55 global cities, which city fascinated and surprised you most in terms of exploration? Hey, what a tough yeah. question. So tough I mean, how is, I'm how sure you going to answer that? I mean, whatever comes <laughs> to mind, you'll answer. But I'm sure you'll go back after the show's over and say, oh, shit, I actually didn't remember this one. I was actually fairly, very surprised by China. I mean, it was my first first uh, trip there. I didn't know, I didn't know what Rishi. to expect. The government huh? listens to the show. Huh, go, oh, on, go on, go <laughs> on. Yeah. I'll tell you which countries you can pray. Uh, praise, rather. Praise, okay. Oh, I'll, I shall yeah. change my answer immediately. Uh, yeah. Was there Pegasus out here also on the show? Or? <laughs> we just send them this. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're so worried, we just send them everything. <laughs> go on, go on. Yeah. So, so China? I, I, I think China. China really just surprised me. I mean, the... the can I? Yeah. But can I ask you something? A lot of people who I've... Well, I have one friend who does business there. And he says that there are like two Chinas, clearly. There's like a very strong urban China. The three, four big cities. And yeah. uh, then there's the west of China, which is... You don't want to be there. Like they, you know, you, you, you're absolutely like an alien when you go into the, let's say the backwaters of China, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah. No, so so we, we, we did both. Yeah, we, we did both. We went to the interiors of China as well. Uh, went to a few cities out there and spent time in Shanghai and Beijing. Well, you're completely an alien. I, I You know, they've never, they've never uh, seen anyone, I guess, who's non, non-Chinese. And literally you would have people coming and People wanted to, you know, touch my, you know, touch the hair on my hands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Only you're really. like the Yeti or something. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and they'll, they'll be very polite, you know. So you're there on a yeah. on a tourist boat and they say, oh, can we touch? And you're like, okay, yeah, go let's ahead. Let's play it out, but You're saying they're being very polite, but let's play it out. I'm just thinking, uh, excuse me, sir, through Google Translate. I'm not a racist, but we are fascinated by your skin and look yeah. and features. But can we touch yeah. and poke you? For about yeah. five minutes. And then they call the two <laughs> children. Yin Yang, Tin Tang, come on. And poke, yeah. poke, poke. <laughs> press, press. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, and they wanted to take photographs. So they'd, they'd give their, you know, babies to my to my wife and say, you know, can you hold and wow. we'll take a photograph. Uh, so you, you are you are pretty uh, exotic over there. But, but they're very hostile. polite. Not no, not hostile. hostile. They will pull out. I mean, you know, I don't know. They smoke a lot. And, you know, we don't <laughs> smoke. But they would all, I mean, the amount of cigarettes we were offered, you know, as a, as a gesture of kindness. That here, you know, have have a cigarette on us, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it was, and we were there for Chinese New Year in in uh, South, uh, you know, South China in a place called Quelin, uh, and it was it was like Diwali, uh, you know, into ten. Uh, so it is it is a fascinating country. Although they're a little more disciplined, so if the cutoff time for you know Diwali crackers is ten o'clock, then ten o'clock it will stop. Oh, yeah, oh, very very yeah, yeah, very yeah. disciplined. It is. I mean, you can clearly see it's a very regimented you know country. But in general, we found people were happy, and um, uh, you know things were things were moving along, uh, and and it's a very pretty pretty country as well, uh, and of course they have the best of technology. They have the you know they have huge scale, so it was a fascinating it was a fascinating experience. I think they seem so nice that they welcomed the Taliban. So you know, I mean, <laughs> they're really yeah, open yeah. people in that sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, the politi- best of humanitarianism. Politically, yeah. yeah, politically, it's yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a yeah very regimented and a different country that way for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, but from all a tourist culture, perspective, all the tradition, history, you know, I mean, China alone. Sometimes people just avoid China, but there's so much. I mean, they they're parallel to us in terms of you know 
uh, growth from the, from the past from and what the, they've done, what they've what achieved, they've done, what they've yeah. given the world. Yeah. Not to mention Chinese food of any kind, Indian Chinese, Chinese Chinese, Hong Kong <laughs> Chinese. I'm a huge fan, but yeah. we shouldn't say yeah. that because right now it's not flavor of the month. Yeah. We have to be careful. And, Can yeah, we go to friendly country? A very friendly country. Friendly Israel country. Is, is being Japan. Right now. Oh, well, Israel. We didn't cover Japan. Japan. Is great. Japan, is Japan, great. Well, yeah. Japan was fascinating as well. I mean, I, I guess the the culture and I mean, just again the people. I would say the consistent uh, trait we found was you know uh, was kind people uh, wherever we went. And very Japan, respectful. I, very very respectful. If you've ever been yeah. to the Netherlands, they're very friendly. If also. you want to go to prostitutes, you don't have to go to Netherlands. You <laughs> talk mean, to me offline there. and I will recommend closer places. <laughs> no, no, but My it, it is God, very man. friendly, you know that. Two oh, adults are talking and you jump in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they, are, they know the clients are only people of our skin color. So there's no yeah. way, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. You were saying about Tokyo and Japan, yeah? Yeah, Japan. I mean, uh, you know, just uh, I mean, over there, if you ask for directions, you know, uh, literally they will leave um, because they, you know, if they cannot explain where you need to go, they will drop everything. They will shut their shop. Yeah, we had that experience. Yeah, and they will they will come and you know escort you to where you need to go. And after a while, we were like embarrassed to ask anyone because you know we don't want them to disrupt their entire uh, hour. So this gentleman on the road in Tokyo when we were there in 2019, he just went into Google Translate, didn't speak English, uh, and immediately helped. And then went to a shop and bought bagels for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, oh. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, Malishka. You know, the RJ Malishka. She's very famous. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was yeah. Malishka's surname? Let's call her RJ Malishka. So she was uh, there and all, and, and they, they sent bagels, and you know, they were. I mean. One male thought third world countries starving people need to feed them. <laughs> but just extremely, it's like, I think what Rishi is saying, there's there's a need to really please the guest. So the guest has no, you know, the Mehman no. culture is like, the guest yeah. is really God and does not feel at all troubled for a second. It's embarrassing. I, I totally get what you're saying. It's embarrassing because you don't expect that. Imagine yeah. us. Yeah, with strangers. Of course, we are very good with our uh, guests when once we invite them, but with strangers. Uh, 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 see the year uh, left. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Yeah. It's also, something Japan. sexual, huh? See that here. Got us off guard with that, Rishi. You rascal. <laughs> Too many kids' tales, and you have to go the other way. Um, all right, sorry. Next one. Yep. Next one comes in from Pradeep Pillai. He says, uh, "You, Cyrus, you being an avid avid reader, I have heard you saying you are able to complete two to three books a week. Not now. What would be his tips for us who are able to complete one two books a month on speed reading? One two one two books a month isn't bad. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I think first and foremost you have to remember your Hamlet, uh, one of the greatest lines in literature: "To thine own self be true." Mm. Why do you have to read twenty two books a month? Read what you like to read, and then the time will just fly. There's no point yeah. reading because somebody told you to read. Read Shaw, read Oscar Wilde, read this, read that. Read something you like. What the hell you like? Read books on cricket. I love sports books, for example. I like bio bio books on famous history, personalities and kings and even statesmen. So whatever, they, everybody has subjects they like. No matter what you are, how, how stupid you think you are, you maybe you like Hindustani classical music, you know, suddenly that's, you'll be able to read books about it. Uh, so I, I think that's all the person has to find the subject that's really relating to what he likes. That's it. If, if sex, for example, if that's all you got in your head, then just read books on sex. Very interesting. Uh, so, so many, you know, I mean, well-written, well-researched books. Uh, because would you agree, Rishi? Once I give you something you like, then you're a reader. Yeah. There's no point saying you're a reader because you there are people who are voracious and they can go across varieties. But you have to find subjects that you like. This this kid loves his comedy, for example. He can just uh, write. I mean, so many lovely Lenny Bruce's story. I don't know if you've read that. I have it here somewhere. I'll give it to you. It's fabulous. Okay, please, yes. Because, I mean, yep. I mean, half the half the time he's you know fighting and protesting physically. Yeah. <laughs> his life is you know the other the drunk and you know, all that is like the better part of his life. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so I think it's just a subject, and then the reading will happen. Uh, I I've never told people to read. I, I I think it's a horrible thing to tell people to read. You know, it's just like a punishment. They'll never read if you do that. Yeah, no, completely agree. Yeah. It, it's like Indians abroad. You you can't tell them not to spit. You have to say, see what they are doing. They are not spitting. You suggest like that. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or read small books. <laughs> you used to get the small books in school. Uh, do you remember those like 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 the Three Musketeers in a bridge version? I, again, I have one or two yeah. here. They're literally this big. This big. Yeah. So the actual uh, book, which I have, say the Alexander Duma, 667 pages in English from French, right. uh, is the big book. Uh, 20 years after, Man in the Iron Mask, all three of them. Hmm. And the, the abridged version is 120 pages and it's th- with a few pictures and it's this big. You basically get the essence. It's anyway True. in French, the way I see it. <laughs> all right. Next one comes in from Prithvi. Uh, he or she says, Hi, and question for Mr. Rishi. 
what do you think kids of today will think of books like Tintin, Asterix, In- Enid Blyton, any specific thoughts on her firstly? Uh, Famous Five, Archie, Mad Comics, which I used to read in my heydays. Mm, good question. Really? Yeah, good. You're the author? Good question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much they will they will identify uh, with this kind of humor or this kind of writing, right? Because kids nowadays, at least my kids, I mean, they're you know they're watching shows, they're watching Netflix. It's a whole different uh, it's too uh, much genre. Too yeah. many options. We didn't have those options. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I don't even so, know. First, I didn't even have live sport. I mean, live sport was very little. Imagine if you were foot, foot, not, football nut, cricket nut, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You got all that to deal with, which is available on different apps and all. You can see the whole world, for example. And then on top yeah. of that, Netflix and all the things that you mentioned, then Insta and your social interactions that you need to do all the time. So I think they really suffer. If they read a book in this generation for a year, we should be grateful. Oh, yeah. I don't expect I, more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, but having said that, I also think there are two types. So there's some books from your father's generation that you would read, maybe because of influences at home. Like my dad loved cowboy books. So I read, read all the J.T. Edsons and, you know, Sudden and all these books, Max Brand. I don't know, you probably haven't heard of them, but big cowboy book collections we, have, we still have. And uh, Tarzan. The books, Edgar Rice Burroughs, wow. from which everything is taken, you know. Uh, and there's so many, like uh, Lord of the Jungle, Tarzan the Ape Man, uh, Tarzan and the Ant Men, The Return of Tarzan. I mean, this, and I had about 18 or 20, I think there were over 30 in all at one point. So those came from the dad, you know, in that sense. Yeah. And then there are things that you discover. So your generation has your own thing. And that's very few things are common. Let me check. My wife's not here. Books on sex, like I mentioned. Books on animals, like I mentioned. These things should stay. But, but then you find your own way. <laughs> And then you've got like your, your Harry Potter generation and all that became so big. The whole one or maybe two generations of kids have just read that. I've had so many uh, children my son's uh, age group who were just ha- Potterheads. This young man sitting in front of us, Rishi, not you, though you are looking young, is also, aren't you a Potterhead, bro? I love Potter, yeah. At least the books. Yeah. More than the movies. Yeah. And did you read all of them? Multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, whether he was a reader yeah. or not, once he found something he really liked, he, he read the same book Can't eight stop. times. Yeah. I, I, that right. works for yeah. me, man. Yeah. yeah, but uh, but it is right. You didn't like, understand the story. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Of course, yes. Uh, you read it like the fifth time. Like, oh, okay, it's still. What is that last time? <laughs> 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 Who's but the guy still, with the glasses? <laughs> Yeah, but sorry. it is difficult at least now. I, I like. Uh, I, I I'm sure this is me and not everyone in my generation. But <clears throat> we have a lot of us have lost the interest to read. Uh, reading is, I think, a, for a lot of people, it's a lost habit, and uh, it's kind of sad. But yeah, it is and also for the this generation, it's not a habit. So for us, it's a lost habit because we we've got soft yeah. with the whole <laughs> options that are there. Me for mm-hmm. sports takes up my time. I'm watching all the time. Um, you know, I think most people without work do that in India. Let's be honest. <laughs> And, but this generation is growing up with don't have that idea of reading anyway yeah, as, yeah. As, a, as a thing unless the electricity goes when that when that happened people picked up <laughs> books you you guys remember between the two lockdown we, we were shooting something I remember and we had to stop shooting get a generator and uh, the whole of South Bombay came to Sansil for about 5-6 hours it was in November last oh, year oh yeah 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 Oh, okay. so that's the first time I was looking for books. Nothing else to do. <laughs> Six hours. What? iPad not working? Damn you. Oh, let's watch Framed in Hollywood. So this is I've heard this name. <laughs> basically, we have to wait for like a post-apocalyptic event uh, to post-apocalyptic start event. reading again, yeah. basically. Yeah. Go back. Yeah. The old order change it. Yielding place to the new. Yeah. go. It's okay. Yeah. Reading is changing. Or to give kids uh, books, uh, you know, once they get a phone, you know, at the age of 12, 13, whenever, you know, we give kids phones. But uh, at least before that, you know, encourage them to to read. Uh, because once they get a phone, then I think the book is the book is out. So, But also see, City yeah. of Adventure, this uh, style is a quick read, from what I gather. A big yeah. font. Uh, the kids don't who don't have attention spans, we are assuming, but some of them really don't. Uh, it's much easier. They can get into it. They can finish the book quickly. They can, if they really like it, then obviously it doesn't matter after that because they'll keep reading. Yeah. But I think to hook them, you've given them an easy sort of uh, beginning and style for them to get into it. Other than lots of words. I think that's another way people get turned off reading because there's lots of words and they just can't get to... Yeah. It just flies over the head. It's a step-by-step step process. Yeah, exactly. And I put a lot of illustrations. You know, I've, uh, I've got these architecture illustrations. I've got these characters. So it, it kind of breaks the flow. Um, so which is... Uh, which hopefully would resonate with kids. Yeah, I'm going through, through the pictures, but they all look like foreigners. Huh? I don't see any desis. Rishi, I, is there yeah, an element of racism I'm, in the book? <laughs> no, well, well it, it, it is based, I guess, in a foreign city. No, but I've kept, the, I've kept the characters pretty generic. I've called them Tara and Neil. I've not given them any ethnicity. Uh, no one knows where they are from. 
uh, and uh, so I've just left it as generic as. Who hasn't possible. grown up with a Tara and a Neil in their school? And, <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you kidding? But it's, it's not it's a not, foreign name. It's taken now. No, no, but <laughs> enough yeah. Taras and Neils, I think, in many parts of the world. So I've tried to. It was a struggle to find the names. Like, what, what name would actually translate across different you know, countries? Bobby, male Bobby. or female? Bobby, all culture. Just call your next five kids Bobby. Bobby one, Bobby two, Bobby three, Bobby four, Bobby five. Bobby the chut, the one I don't like. <laughs> okay, next. All right, uh, next one is for Cyrus. It's from Thirsty Fish. It says uh, Cyrus, Cyrus, don't you think Kunal resembles George from Seinfeld? Also, could you please share his monkey cigarette story again? Kunal. Uh, oh. Oh, the monkey, there are two cigarette stories. One is when they stole all his, uh, in Malaysia. So, he and my daughter… Stole the cigarettes? So, that was on the beach. They stole the cigarettes. From <laughs> him, well, we went into the sea. Me, my daughter and my wife. And of course, our fat friend doesn't want to move. So, he lay down with all the stuff. You need someone to, you're still in Asia. So, you've got to, you know. So, all the little wallet, wallet, all that nonsense. And his cigarettes, after smoking one or two, he puts them near his hip or whatever. And he's only in his costume and a towel, lying on that deck chair or whatever it is. You know, low deck chair. And uh, they came, they took the cigarettes, pulling them out five feet from him. And then he started shouting, chew, chew, chew. <laughs> he's not going to go one-on-one -on -one with a bloody big size uh, baboon-like creature. But the guy was teasing him. It was a, a eating it, biting it, spitting it out and that kind of thing. It's destroyed the whole uh, thing. The better story is that we just reached uh, Kenya and uh, Masai Mara. And we had these, it was uh, on an incline, the entire hotel. Uh, hotel Masai Mara only, I think it's called. And so, uh, we had this big sort of double room. So, me and Aisha went in one room and Kunal and Maya were supposed to be in one room. And um, so, they started getting their things together. So, he got into his towel, got his cigarette and went to the balcony to smoke. He's not allowed to smoke inside the room. And so while he's at the balcony, the monkey comes monkey, uh, out of nowhere. And then Maya hears this scream and Kunal is trying to hang on to his towel. The monkey's pulling the towel, jumping in <laughs> and then it jumped out. It didn't really do anything, but it scared the crap out of him. And, you know, he never went to the balcony again. To smoke, he go all the way down. <laughs> Rather than oh. go through that. So, yeah. Some great stories. George from Seinfeld, I don't think so. George is more of a liar. You know, he just lives in this insincere lie. Kunal is very pompous. The real Kunal, if you get to know, he's like, the, the word pompous and bombastic come to mind. That he does share a little bit with him. But George, it, it, essentially, is not really pompous. So he's, he's more Elaine. Guy. He's more Elaine than George, kind of. He's a mix of, yeah, I would give him a little bit of Elaine. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, there's a certain pomp. Like, if we enter a meeting, we plan everything. He, he uses I. I said this, I did this. I, uh, six people have written the presentation. Six people have contributed. Sometimes it's going to be the least. He's not mentioning anybody else. He always does that. He can't help it. He suddenly thinks, you know, oh, I've done this, I've done that and whatever. So I would I would mix him up with the two of them. Yeah, definitely nothing uh, from Kramer. Oh, racism. Yeah, that he has. <laughs> that he has. Uh, reverse racism, elitism, classism. All those isms are there. Yeah. But which South Bond, which he, oh, hand on heart, which South Mumbaiker really likes people from other classes? It doesn't work. I've tried. <laughs> I've done a survey. He just don't like those guys. Yeah. No, just kidding. Huh? Don't write to us. Okay, bro. Can we uh, take one more and then I have to also run and Rishi is very busy. He's got 10 books more to write. Uh, <laughs> this one is slightly a uh, heavier topic, but uh, let's see if you can answer it. Uh, this one comes in from Tarun Kaushik. He says, when the Black Lives uh, Matter movement happened, some slave traders' statues were brought down. In our country, many cities slash roads are being renamed. Do you think that forgetting the past is the right way? Or are there any alternatives? This is a huge question. Because, uh, you know, you talk about... Uh, Rishi, we want to take this. You talk about sins of the past. <laughs> yes, right. And yeah. you're living in a time where you judge by the time. Was Genghis Khan more brutal than the other leaders of that time? Not particularly. Probably, maybe a little bit. But it's difficult to say. So those uh, slaver statues coming down... Um, I don't know, it's a tough one. But to deny the past is, is, is wrong. You can't just say it never happened. It's like people say the Holocaust never mm. happened. You can't just do that. Can't work that way. So, uh, but I totally agree that we shouldn't name anybody. Uh, living people shouldn't get uh, their, their stadiums and their roads and their statues. When you're living, it shouldn't happen. For God's sake, you're living, you're passing by with your family. Hey, selfie lane, my statue is here. driver, stop the car. Hey, no, daddy, we can't see your face. Ah, what the hell is going on? How, how, which culture in the world allows living people to be, you know, glorified like that? Let them bloody die. Let 10 years pass, 20 years pass, and then, you know, they become legends. That's what I feel. And these horrible things about South Mumbai and Mumbai especially, uh, Rishi, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, we never use those new names. 
whatever we names oh, yeah. we knew and I mean we still use the same names. I don't know what Paw yeah. is like, but I mean, do you, do you say Kemp's Corner or do you say Gorilla Choke or whatever it's called? Mm. What's Fountain's people... real name? Yeah, exactly. I don't so know Fountain's times, real name. How many times you say Bombay first and then like, oh, sorry, Mumbai? That happens so yeah. often. If I if you speak in Hindi now, you you say Bombay. Bombay. Yeah. You'll just say Bombay. Oh, Bombay. It'll just come naturally. Yeah, also correct. in English. Yeah, yeah. If you speak in yeah. Marathi, you'll say Mumbai. If you can speak all three fluently, then I understand you can you take the liberty of doing it like that. But I honestly think it's unnecessarily complex. You know, it makes no yeah. sense. Really. Yeah. Absolutely. No, completely but, agree uh, with you. Rishi, can we have a statue named after you and can you erect one and will you be happy? <laughs> will you like it'll, be, be taller? it'll be you awkward like be and embarrassing. It'll be awkward and embarrassing. I'd oh. rather people just buy a few copies of the books. <laughs> That's just for thousand books. I mean, I'm giving you a statue. This will be in gold, <laughs> worth crores of rupees from the exchequer. We should make sure that two hospitals will not have the vaccine. We will divert yeah. the funds for your building of your statue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a few years you later, might change. You'll be on a you horse might. with Priyanka Chopra uh, holding <laughs> your hand instead of the CEO from uh, uh, Hindustan Liver. You need <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. What a story that is. We have one right. last question. ASB asks. Yeah, quick, yeah. Uh, hello all, Rishi sir, which degree would you best suggest for someone interested do, uh, interested in going into hedge funds, wealth management, etc.? <laughs> I think he's done the antithesis no, of again. all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the tra- I think um, the traditional degrees would be, you know, economics or an MBA. Uh, but if you are interested in uh, in uh, finance, I would suggest you read the read the financial papers, read what's happening about what's happening in the markets because at the end of the day end of the day the degree is you know literally just a piece of paper it is your uh, practical information uh, which actually comes uh, comes handy when you're in the workforce uh, a lot of people i know they have great degrees but literally they don't read uh, you know the wall street journal or the economic times they have no idea what's happening in the markets so it's all theoretical knowledge which doesn't really help so uh, that would be my suggestion. But having said that, middle class mentality of India, urban India, for sure, you need your degree. No one's yeah. that, that, that choke hold is on you from your parents. We discussed it right at the top of the show. Yeah. Many entrepreneurs have come and done the same thing. They switched everything in their lives, achieved something else. But the choke hold is there from the next earlier generation. You have to get the degree. Am I right? It's just not possible. It, it won't change. Yeah. I, I really yeah. doubt it will change. You'll still go and get the degree. We're still trying to send my son to Canada in all this mess, whatever. Yeah. But easily tell him, don't waste time. Go and do something with your life. <laughs> <laughs> which you probably will at some point. All right, Rishi, thank you so much. Sorry, but I've got to talk to Parsis now. And that will always take a long time. Uh, 40, 50 Parsis, all like you hear their own voice. So, uh, sim- hello will take 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm really regretting that. Uh, but really great uh, respect, a lot of honor. A lot of respect, great honor having you on the show. Um, and I hope to see you soon and with the next a lot of books. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, Cyrus. Cities of Adventure. Pleasure. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thanks. Our pleasure. Bye-bye, sir. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps. Please, we beg you. We need you. Send us your questions on Twitter on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on whatcyrussays at gmail.com. Do you like true crime stories? Do you like to learn about the people behind some horrible, awful crimes? More specifically, women that may have committed these crimes. Actually, Indian criminals that are women? Then we'd like to welcome you to our podcast, Misconduct. My name is Raghavi. And I am Nisha. We cover themes like murder, decoity, drug trafficking, financial fraud, kidnapping, and many more. You can catch us every Wednesday on the IVM Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcast. A wise man once said, traveling, it makes you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller. Well, listen to such travel stories and experiences exploring India on the Musafir Stories with us, Seth and Faiza. Catch us on the IVM website, app or wherever you get your podcasts from.